Hey, good evening, everybody. So the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder radio telescope in Western Australia just went online a few days ago. It actually detected a couple days ago a, uh, a new fast radio burst, uh, a new FRB. If you've been following me for some time, you'll know that I'm very interested in this phenomenon. It actually was my featured talk at the inaugural, uh, the first ever Observing the Frontier Conference. And it's actually been incorporated into every talk that I've done since then. It's a really interesting phenomenon. Scientists don't know what causes it. And uh, the what I call natural origin hypotheses are dwindling. Uh, so they're running out of them. Uh, so we just detected another one. Um, so that's really exciting news. There's a picture of the telescope array. So here's a list of all the fast radio bursts we've detected to date. There are 24 discrete fast radio bursts that have been detected to date. There have been 25 discrete fast radio bursts if you include the double pulse, which occurred on, um, what is that, October 2nd, 2012. Uh, that's actually an interesting thing to point out. So the name of the FRB actually refers to the date that it was detected. So 12-10-02 refers to October 2nd, 2012. There's been 35 discrete fast radio bursts if you include the 10 that have repeated from the same source. Uh, and then here is the most recent FRB 170107, which is January 7th, 2017, uh, detected at the Australian telescope. And uh, that's another point. That's not unusual uh, for it to take several months for them to actually dig through all the mine data that they've captured with the radio telescope. Uh, so while it was detected in January, it wasn't published or, or noticed uh, in, until just a few days ago. Uh, and dispersion measure here, so this is what makes these things so interesting, uh, is their dispersion measure. Dispersion measure is a measurement of distance uh, from Earth. So let me see here. So when, here's a picture of, of a dispersion measure. So this is a image of a fast radio burst. You can see it there as it spikes. You know, here's this high intensity spike in energy right here. Uh, and here is the, the frequency that the fast radio burst came in on. So right when it was first detected, it was a little bit higher up here over the one or two milliseconds that these things last for, it gradually sloped down uh, to a lower frequency. This difference in frequency is called the dispersion measure. And they can use this to estimate the distance at which this signal originated from. Uh, the concept is that as a signal travels through the interstellar medium, whether it's dust, gas, you know, other space junk, uh, as it travels through all that stuff over billions of years, it's going to slow down microscopically. It's going to slow down and uh, this difference in times that the signal was received, we can therefore take an estimate of the distance at which that signal has traveled uh, and how far away it, it came in from. So what makes these really interesting is that all the dispersion measures of the first 10 fast radio bursts were all equal multiples of the number 187.5. Uh, and you can see here, and this actually more clearly shows it, uh, this is just bizarre. Uh, so at a distance of 187.5 times 2 dispersion measure, we got 1. At a distance of 187.5 times 3, we got 3. At a distance of 187.5 times 4 uh, dispersion measure, we got 4. Uh, so you can see that this was a really interesting uh, pattern that was forming, and it was rather convincing that this could be an artificial signal. So what, what I was thinking is that because these are equally spaced origin sources, uh, this could perhaps be a, a, a system of beacons set up uh, at equally spaced uh, origin points. Now, over time, the 187.5 multiple has not held up, but it kind of has held up. Um, so here is an interesting uh, image. So this is from a video over at Ben's channel, uh, Suspicious Observers. This is from the conference uh, that we did on, uh, what was it? Uh, just this year in, in April. Um, 
So this is a graph of the dispersion measure dispersion measures proximity to a whole multiple of 187.5. And the red line is what it should be if it was completely random. Uh, the blue line represents the actual data. So it's a little interesting. It's, it's certainly not random so far. Uh, and we've had 25 discrete examples of it. If you include the 10 repeating into here, uh, which we did not because that would, uh, that would skew the results um, because they all come from the same source, uh, it would skew the results. But if you add the 10 in, it would even be a greater uh, correlation to 187.5. So it's a really interesting uh, uh, phenomenon going on. Uh, it's so interesting that uh, when we first started, Michael Hipke, I think I'm pronouncing it right, uh, discrete, discrete Steps in Dispersion Measures of Fast Radio Bursts, uh, this, this was from a while, this is from 2015, but, but he argues that the, the multiples and the dispersion measures and their relationship to each other are unusual and, statist and statistically uh, improbable. Uh, so I'll include this link in the, in the description. Uh, so here, oh, this is the, um, what is this? Oh, February 15th, 2015. Uh, oh, this is just another fast radio burst I was looking at. Uh, but, so yeah, we, we just discovered another one. Um, the latest fast radio burst, you know, adds to the, to the mystery. Uh, you know, we, we looked with 11 telescopes. Um, you know, it's, it's a really fast radio burst, uh, or really f interesting fast radio burst. Uh, since 2000, no, th th this is actually 24, I think. Yeah, let me look at that. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yeah, so there's been 24 um, fast radio bursts. Uh, uh, again, 25 if you, if you include the double pulse, and 35 if you include the repeating one. Oh, yeah, so here's something interesting. This was from uh, the, not the last Observing the Frontier, but the Observing the Frontier before that, where this is a plot graph of the dispersion measures detected as of that date. Uh, I still actually have to plot the, the new one uh, to see where it comes from, or see where it places in this. But it just looked a little bizarre and a little symmetrical to me. So, uh, you know, remember, this is a representation of the distance at which fast radio bursts originate from. Uh, Looks a little symmetrical, looks a little weird. Not saying it's aliens, not saying it's not. Um, without digging way too deep into all the science of it, fast radio bursts are, uh, we're running out of natural origin ideas about where they come from. Uh, there were a number of ideas that they were caused by uh, stellar flares. We've ruled that out. We know that they're extra galactic. Um, the, the current theories... Uh, that hold any water uh, is really limited to one, or, or I'm sorry, two. Uh, the first is a pulsar wind down, which would be an object collides with a pulsar and slowly that, uh, that pulsar releases energy over time and bursts. Uh, but that would imply that they should all be repeating, and we don't see that. We only have one, maybe two that have repeated um, so, you know, there is a little bit of a gray area there. The other natural origin theory is that they are asteroids or other objects uh, colliding with neutron stars, releasing an enormous amount of energy. That would, that has some difficulty uh, explaining away the repeating fast radio burst. Uh, so would you expect these sort of cataclysmic events to repeat as often as they have with that one repeating uh, fast radio burst. So, I mean, it's, it's possible there's a cloud of asteroids impacting uh, a, a neutron star, releasing these energies, uh, and that's where we're getting this repeating, but it statistically is, is a little improbable. Um, so yeah, those are the natural origin theories that are holding up. Uh, you'll see a lot of news here, and I, again, just want to point this out, and I don't know if this is my obsession and hatred of this whole fake news phenomenon, but uh, you know, astronomers discover what is causing mysterious cosmic radio bursts. Uh, no, we didn't. Um, and even if you read through this, uh, it, it, this article basically just says they, they pointed out that FRB, November 2nd, 2012, uh, which was 
originally believed to be emanating from within our Milky Way galaxy. So what they're referring to there is the uh, the nearby stellar uh, flare theory, which was disproved, I believe, in 2011. So th this is some pretty bad reporting. Um, so, you know, they located it in a stellar nursery about three light years away. Okay, so maybe it came from a, a galaxy three billion light years away. They don't know what caused it. Uh, so this is just some real bad reporting by Fox News. Um, and then here's another one, Daily Mail. Alien signals are pinpointed. Uh, fast radio bursts are coming from 2.4 billion light years away. Uh, you know, we didn't really pinpoint it. You know, we don't understand what's causing it. But for uh, this particular FRB, November 2nd, 2012, and I'm trying to remember if that was the, the real-time fast radio burst or not. I don't believe it is. Uh, but, yeah, so we were able to find out its location uh, but that doesn't mean we have any idea what's causing it. So despite what you might read on, I don't know, these, these silly daily mail things, uh, no, we don't know what's causing it. There are two natural origin theories that uh, still contain water, uh, that being the pulsar slowdown and uh, the uh, neutron star collision theory. Uh, but other than that, we, we don't know what's causing them. The, the, the mystery of their correlation to 187.5 continues. The natural origin theories are dwindling. Uh, we may never know what causes them, um, but it's, it's, it's important to point out that several Harvard physicists, and let me actually look that up here, and this was actually part of the talk uh, that I gave at Observing Frontier, Uh, because we're lacking in um, an answer for a natural origin answer for this, um, several Harvard scientists have theorized that these could be uh, transportation systems. Uh, so we might be picking up the bursts of energy involved in solar sail travel. Um, so this is really fascinating, and I'll, I'll dig up the actual uh, article for this. Uh, the concept is that these are so energetic, so powerful signals, uh, and as our solar system orbits relative uh, in the universe to the other solar system, uh, we might get a brief flash of their solar sail uh, technology as we orbit around each other, and it would appear in, as a millisecond flash of energy, uh, which is what a fast radio burst looks like. and they would use these things to push uh, solar sail based interstellar probes around their you know, local region. Uh, so it's a pretty fascinating thing. And uh, you know, you feel free to watch my, my earlier talks on this. I'll, I'll try to dig up some links for that because we really dig deep into what these Harvard scientists were doing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a fascinating concept. Uh, it's, it's fast radio bursts continue to be a really exciting uh, topic to cover so I encourage the audience to keep to pay attention to it and uh, despite what fake news and the internet might say we have no idea where they come from and we're running out of answers uh, so anyway hope uh, hope you appreciate it check out some of the mathematical stuff uh, 187.5 it's pretty neat um, check out you know the the non-random nature of some of these things and uh, oh another point before I go is that uh, the frequency of which the large, the vast majority of these fast radio bursts come in on is 1.4 gigahertz, which is very, very, very close to 1.42 gigahertz, which is the hydrogen line. Uh, so I encourage you to look up what the hydrogen line is, uh, but the hydrogen line uh, is deeply involved with the SETI project and it uh, might be a fun rabbit hole for you to dig down. So anyway, thank you all for your time. Appreciate it.